All right, uh, rather than wait for everything to get loaded, I just restarted my machine as usual. Um, a bit late this time. Yes, I know. Um, so rather than wait for everything to get started, I'm just going to keep loading stuff up like Unity right here. Um, and it'll just, it'll be a little, it'll be quiet for a minute. Just you and us. You and me. Makes us, I guess. All right, I'm already off to a good start with the English. Um, cool. I love, I love that my, uh, I bought this computer in Sweden. So whenever I go to restart the machine and it goes to force, uh, force applications closed, it always pops up this little message that's like, Stata om inda, or something like, Stata om inda. If you, speak Swedish correctly, I think it, I heard. If you ever think you're over-exaggerating the pronunciation of Swedish words, you're probably still not over-exaggerating them enough. Swedish is the raddest language to listen to in person. Um, when, I, when I lived there, the, the Swedes sound like elves. They do crazy weird sounds with some of their letters. Like every R is like, I can't, I can't do it. Like a, the the twirl the the twirl and they'll they will go so over the top with an r in a word especially if they're riled up or whatever i'm just like holy shit but anyways it's it's a it's a cool language good people hey pattis hey justin uh, justin you said still awake do you mean me uh. It's funny, I woke up at 5.17 this morning. I wake up basically um, more and more, so I try to wake up when Jasmine wakes up. Um, but if there's nothing going on necessarily, and Jasmine wakes up really early so she can get a workout in before she goes to work, you know, historically I would, I would sleep a little bit. And, uh, you know, then she'd go work out for 45 minutes or an hour or whatever, come in, and I've got an extra hour of sleep. But I woke up before her today because... I don't think, no, I don't think, maybe, was she working out this morning? I can't remember. Anyways, I woke up at like 5.17 on my own, looked at the clock and was like, oh shit, um, I bet, because I asked before I went to bed if Zukin and Goblin were going to be awake, um, when I, I was like, will you be awake in eight hours? <laughs> when I went to bed, I was like, will you be awake in eight hours so we can chat? And uh, when I woke up. They checked and they were awake. I was like, oh, let me just get out of bed immediately, let her sleep. And then we hopped in and had a really great discussion on uh, on some art stuff that is actually made some interesting progress this morning. So, hey, Forever Mash, Arthan, hello, uh, Big Al, what's up? Space Eater 41, hello. This is first time chat, but for some reason I thought I've seen that name before. Um, let's see. Justin said narrowly avoided my apartment flooding, so been up all night. Oh, that's no good. Are you on the ground floor? Uh, zoned out washing dishes came by. Water was spilling out of the floor. Took a while. Oh, so you you were flooding your own apartment? No, and you're on the second floor. Oh shit! I thought you had said you were like upstairs. Yeah, flooding the apartment below you is never fun. You know what's you know what's you know what's even less fun than flo uh, flooding an apartment below you, having your roommate fire an AK forty seven through the ceiling of his bedroom, through the floor and the ceiling of the apartment above him. That one's not fun. That's a whole. That's the. I don't know if I ever told that story, but it's the story. Happened while I was in the army. Happened while I was in the army. It was not. It was not great. It was not. It was not good time. I'll tell that story sometime. Um. All right. So we got no music in the background. Accidental? No. Nope. He tried to say it was accidental. He he was he was going through some stuff. He was going through some stuff. Uh, we're really lucky that that was all that happened with that guy. All right. Now I'm already telling like a third of the story. Uh, so. Yeah, it was super yikes. And I had just had surgery, so I was, I was bedridden. 
And when I heard that, uh, I was up out of bed looking in his door like, WTF, homie? And uh, with my girlfriend behind me, uh, he's like, oh, it went off while I was cleaning it. Yeah, not good. Anyway, video games. Yes, exactly, Big Al. I'll tell that story some other time. But uh, those of you watching Navad, welcome. These are the type of stories that we tell, even though it is a game development VOD for the most part. It's, it's, it's partially game development. It's partially you guys checking out some M&M because we know you're hungry for it. Hey, BDC Retro. Hey, Rev. Um, there's no music playing in the background because we're just going to hop in the game and there will be some music there. Remez. Hello. I turned down the music a little bit. Did, was this already in play yesterday, or I mean Tuesday when I was streaming? I My days are all blurs, so this may have been, was this yesterday it came online? Okay, new UI, looks like new UI to you, BDC Retro, then it was not in play on Tuesday. We got some new stuff going on. <coughs> hmm. I'm just going to take a moment to savor this delicious, super hot coffee. Fortress. Fortress. Welcome. Log in. Pattis. I'm telling you. I'll make this. I'll make the background seem. I'll make the background seem. I've, I've been so inspired to do it. Didn't know my hands were so small. Yeah. They said I've got tiny hands. Do, 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 do. Um, I'm not going to, I was about to say, I can log into the elementalist. I made a elementalist and leveled them to level two as fast as humanly possible. Um, and there's, it's fun because it allowed me to look at some stuff in our, in our logs. I'll show you that in a little bit. Don't let me forget. Justin says, has there been a discussion about trade skills? I need my new guild in EQ2 to stay away. Um, yeah, we, we, we discussed trade skills a fair bit, but it's going to be an ongoing discussion. So we're getting, we're getting like a first pass in that, um, allows us to just have stuff to do and to upgrade and go use harvest nodes and just get the system rolling. Um, and then we'll be having a bigger discussion about what we want to do on that front um, because it's something that uh, a few of us are passionate about including including big old cranky Ollie and uh, uh, Nick and Amy and others so if you look a couple of things to look at right now actually um, is that the textures were already will already start to look a little bit sort of richer um, but uh, part of this whole setup here is new UI. Keith just got this in. Hey, Dargeth. So we can rotate our character. There's some stuff that we're missing still, right? Like being able to zoom in on face and other stuff. Um, he noted that like when we do new character. Um, I don't think this is updating between characters yet. Nick pointed out a good point, which is this down here is kind of like extraneous. If, if I'm already looking at as a thing's... Level two human bard there. I don't need to see it at the bottom, so that'll be good. Um, if I go to new character, something about the way I my I'm playing in um, the editor, and so it's always starting out like this, and then I'm maximizing it, so it, it screws up the scaling in here. So ignore that. Um, is it a new character model? No, we've just, we found, we made some discoveries this morning with regards to materials that we're using. So we had a long, um, discussion, me, uh, Goblin, Zukin, Ali, um, Nick was listening in. I think maybe somebody else was listening in. Um, anyways, we, we talked a lot about textures and as at the end of it, we actually found something that was making our textures not look as good as they could. And then we talked a lot about texture technique and fidelity and where we want to take that next. So 
you're actually gonna you're about to see like textures um in the models both skin face and then clothing step up a bit um so it's it's exciting it's exciting so you're gonna see an increase in fidelity um and uh yeah, it, it was just really a fun talk. I was so glad that I got up this morning for that. Um, BDC Retro said text box at the bottom could be listing what zone the character logged out in. Oh, fair point. Yeah. Belfaster said, would you be able to put your current location down there? And the eyes have it. And <laughs> Fortress backed it. Um, are you guys letting people do custom maps like EQ2 maps or run around blindly? Um... We're talking about allowing for different types of maps to be found or purchased or made in game, but they will never show your location. They would just be like dead maps. I think, um, I think, uh, Embers, I think Embers does the same thing, right? So basically you, you get the map, but uh, so then you still got to basically do land navigation, right? So anyways, uh, UI's mess, this UI is messed up on my end, but I think that's kind of a me problem until we can fix it. Um, but you can, you can see it's coming along. So I'm going to back out. I leveled up the bard in from one to two in 27 minutes. I leveled up, uh, the elementalist in 23 minutes, both of them without quests. So... And then it was cool because we could look at the data. Um, look for the burned out meth lab on the left. I'm, I'm known to make some silly content, but I don't know if we're going to get that silly. So it's interesting. Um, nope, not there. Wrong one. Didn't want to click that. If I go to log. Um, I just realized you probably can't hear the music very well, so let me, let me actually get into game, but on a, on a throwaway, enter, <clears throat> and then, Oh, it's still warm, but I got to go fast. I can feel the warmth leaving, leaving the giant cup. All right. So anyway, while all that's loading up, as I said, as soon as I click over, it'll probably pop up. So this was really cool. Um, we don't, we don't, we haven't built like a good interface for viewing the data yet. Um, but still it was easy for me to, if I go show all. Um, did I like that song rats in the walls the other day? Yeah, I need to, I need to have that for me. Um, I need to have that playing in the background while I work. I like that kind of droning doom sound while I'm working. I usually listen to like either a lot of eighties. Um, when I'm working, I'm like, I'll probably listen to either a lot of eighties, uh, specific, like I'll listen to the sword a ton, uh, for whatever reason I like working with that in the background um or oh man what was the other one uh steely dan i've been on a steely dan kick while working but sometimes that sludgy sort of doom metal is good as well so let me finish this one thought so we can move on um essentially it was really cool being able to come into the database and i looked at uh this new guy that i made not him. This is... Alright, so if I look at like as a elementalist. This is essentially my session. I think... Was there something before that? No. Okay. DDJ. 7777. Thank you for the follow. So if you look here. Um, basically, this was my new character entering the zone. And immediately flame bursting. Um, 
but not immediately, right? We can see from the time that I logged in for the first time on that character, two minutes and change, I was already in combat, right? Flame burst. Uh, and so what I could do is easily come through and look at how many times, for example, how many times I cast a spell in that session. And I mean, for you guys, you may look at this and be like, oh, that, uh, whatever. It's not that big a deal or whatever. Um, but I really like the idea that we've already got good logging in because, um, like I could say with this guy, I leveled without questing based on our current experience rate, um, in 23 minutes, it took me 15 kills. I used 32 flame bursts. During that, things I looted of kind of note or value was five cloth scraps, five bat wing, eight bone chips, and three rusty weapons. Now I happen to know, I didn't have it written down over here, but I happen to know I also got a cloth bracer during that session. Um, and what else? Anything anything else notable? Well, if I forget, I could just come back in, right? I can see how much I looted. All of that, right? So I can see the items I destroyed. And so the question we're going to have, and we're going to start proving this out as we start to ramp up playtesting, one of the reasons why we want to have... Um, one of the reasons why we want to have just this ongoing in-development playtest with you guys is... Um, just so we can start to see how does this ramp up, right? Like, so, so far, all of our logs since when we first put them in, just with our few of us playing, and I mean, we play a fair bit, um, you know, it's it's added up. We can see that it's like 2.5 megs. Um, Big Al asks, are you gonna store it all, do some sort of purge timer, or seems potentially expensive? That's the question we wanna have. Now, if you read the John Stats book about, um, wow, uh, Ali mentioned this the other day, um, like brought it up as, as uh, part of the discussion. It's like, I think they found that they're quickly st storing a couple of terabytes of information for us. We need to just kind of look and see, first of all, of the stuff that we're tracking, what is valuable. So then we can just, you know, we can throttle some of it. Like if we don't need some of the shit, then, you know, there's no point in recording it. Um, and then we can just see how the, the data is growing and then we'll look at, uh, Ali, this is really Ali's domain. I'm the one that was kind of like waving hands and like, Oh, it's going to be too much. Um, but, uh, Ali's fairly confident that we'll be able to handle it. Uh, so then he'll probably be the one that speaks to how we're going to be handling storage of it. And then as Belfaster, uh, mentioned, yeah, he just said, uh, just need your Power BI, Tableau, MicroStrategy, etc. hooked up and you're good. Yeah, I've used Tableau and uh, ClickSense, I think, in the past. We'll see if we wind up with something like that. Um, we'll see. Essentially, um, the the goal is to like just get this in, first and foremost. And then we'll continue to sort of iterate in terms of uh, mitigating any risk with regards to, or creating a plan with regards to storage of it. Um, we're going to have our like customer service tools just built on top of this, right? Like, so when I was in customer service on EverQuest, I mean, I would, we had like flat files and shit that we had to go dig up on one machine. There was a logs machine that every GM had to use. There's only one machine. We had to go in there and like basically dig up a flat file and fucking read through it was, you know, there's no like front end or anything that allowed us to easily just sort of like search and blah, blah, blah. Now that improved a ton after, you know, cause I was a GM in like 2000. So in the year, subsequent years, it got a lot better. They got better tools and all that stuff, but we're starting with this in mind. Um, just like the bug reporting tool, um, that I have shown you in game. This is similar in that we just want to be ahead of the curve and it allows us to actually um, know a bunch of shit while we're developing early on as well, right? Like, I I think the example I use in here, let me turn this up a little bit so you guys can hear it. The example I've used is, like, if we're talking about something like uh, putting reagents in game, right? So imagine the discussion where I'm like, 
Because I'm 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 crazy, Mr. Fucking Sorry, I'm cursing a lot today. I guess I'm uh wild riled up or something. Uh but I'm actually just thinking, and so when I'm actually thinking, I curse a lot. When I'm not thinking, I don't curse a lot. And as you can tell, I don't curse a lot on the stream, which means I really haven't been thinking very much and I apologize. Um But you know, I'm I'm the guy that's always like, oh yeah, let's use more reagents and this and that. Right? Okay, so if we're if I were to say every spell needs reagents, so then that means the starter character of mine that just came in here, um, you know, my starter character. If the first thing I did was go into combat and um, start blasting with, where is he at? <sighs> start blasting with flame burst. Then the question becomes, all right, I know that I used 35 flame burst or 32 flame burst in that session. Well, then how do we want to tackle that? Is the, is the idea that we would <clears throat> want to actually create a situation in which the, during that first session, you've got to go buy reagents halfway through. Um, what's the sort of, what's the balance? Cause I started with no coin. And so, how much are those reagents going to reasonably cost, right? Like, really sort of taking the the feel thing where it's like, oh, it feels like it'd be cool to have more reagents and actually apply data to sort of challenging that. And then, um, you know, if, the, if we still feel like, oh, it'd be cool, there's nothing that says you couldn't start a, a new player with 50 whatever, uh, you know, what would be good for Flame Burst, like... Uh, Name something in chat. What would be a good reagent for Flame Burst, guys? A pinch of sulfur. A firefly. So, 50 charcoal. There you go. So, it would be pin 50 pinches of sulfur. Would it be one firefly? Big Al, and then you would, you would, it would slowly drain the firefly juice out of it, right? Because we can do that as well with our reagents. Um, we can have basically charged reagents, um, the way that Ollie set it up. Goblin intestine juice. Gross. You gotta eat the firefly? <clears throat> Consume the firefly, it puts a buff on you that allows you then to cast flame burst for as long as you've got the buff on you. I don't know that... I don't know that we can use a buff as a reagent yet. That may be an interesting one. Hmm. Firefly wings. Yeah. So there you go. Basically, so that would be a thing then if we decide we wanted to go that. We're starting you with flame burst. Scroll that you scribe. Uh, we can give you... Yeah, let's just say 50 of any of the things you just mentioned, some charcoal, firefly. Um, now the, the question then becomes, are these normal reagents or are they non-droppable because they're new characters? Though it would be a really big pain in the ass to make a new character, sell the 50 firefly wings, drop that coin on the ground. It's just, I think the return on effort in terms of exploit wouldn't be that big, but yeah. Need butterfly language for quests to get scroll scroll of butterfly language yeah so anyways I just I wanted to show you guys this um, just so you could kind of have it in your heads how we're thinking ahead a bit um, and we'll be building tooling and stuff with this type of stuff in mind so that later on when you're like these damn GM's these game developers on Eminem don't even know what the F they're talking about they don't even know about my my woes and sorrows as a elementalist at level one, cast in flame burst. You're like, we know exactly how many flame bursts we cast there. Buff with charges could be cool as uh, optional reagents. Like you break a fire crystal and you get um, empowered fire with 20 charges. Fire spells cast with that buff on are increased but deplete charges. Yeah, the, the current, like I said, I think we can have charged reagents at the moment. So it'd be like a, a flask of holy water or something. Um, 
and it would deplete over time. I, because I believe that's how we're doing uh, indirectly lantern oil. Oh, because you actually have to apply the oil to the lantern. So that's actually not a good example. But I, I do I do think we've got um, sort of... Uh, well, then what am I even talking about? Because a, a stack is a stack, right? So am I just saying the same thing two different ways? I'd have to go back and look at the thread on that. Embers Adrift uses bear pee. Well, I'm a big fan of borrowing other people's good ideas. <sighs> Dargus said, I like the way Embers uses augment reagents. Where, how do you loot bear pee though? Um, probably out of a bear. Carefully, yes. Um, oh, Dargith explained it great. Uh, says you don't have to have the reagent to use the ability, it just makes your ability better. Yeah, it's interesting. Anytime we're doing a thing that makes it better, it's kind of like the idea of you don't need to have a... Uh, instead of item repair, you can just have... Uh, which is this here? Okay. Here. All right. Excuse me. Um, so the the whenever ideas come up about adding bonuses, right? In, instead of like item repair, you've got uh, you've got your items um, can be sort of buffed by like they're polished or whatever, and so you buff all of your items instead of repairing your items. Um, that approach is is nice. The only thing is we have to then balance all of our systems with the understanding of like with all of those sort of buffs applied uh where where are we landing so um the discussion today i can't wait to like until you guys can start seeing the results of it when you when you see like when you see the impact on our textures coming up, I think you're going to be really amped because if you look a lot of stuff looks pretty flat right now i mean this looks flat because there's no texture applied but um a lot of a lot of stuff you know what i'm not even going to bother trying to explain it i'm just going to say that uh soon you'll be looking at some new textures goblin may be streaming some of it zuka may be streaming some of it um and things are going to look a bit different and it's going to be pretty exciting if you look in here now you'll notice that like the colors are richer um and that's that's a byproduct of the changes we made this morning. So. Love the backpack. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so we'll have a toggle. It's not added yet, but it'll, it'll be in. In soonish. Um, we'll have a toggle that'll allow you to. Because we've got the, the cape in the back slot. And we've got the backpack in the backpack slot. And it'll allow you to toggle off the appearance of the backpack. Toggle off the appearance of the cape. Um, keep both if you like, I guess. Options are nice. You're you're right. It's good to have options. Target said might be a good integration of crafting if they use base materials like bare peat and convert them into consumable augment reagents. Yep. I mean that's the that's the fun thing with crafting. It can it can help uh add value to that type of system. Um as we were saying before, sort of a similar approach with uh, item power. Um, you know, it's a it's a great thing to have integrated into all of our drops and and give us more options for drops instead of just like direct power or uh, vendor trash. <coughs> Shylet, thank you for the follow. I'm gonna turn off my aggro. 
Oops, I'm going to change my keyboard to not be Swedish. Um, and let me make myself invulnerable. Because I have a tendency to... First thing I did this morning on when I was streaming with the guys in the discussion was immediately like launch myself through the air with my speed gym and die. Kind of like. Oh, interesting. I, did Ali already start working on the new player controller? Because that is in no way as broken as it used to be. It used to be I could just, because of the speed that I was moving, I would just throw myself way in the air. And it doesn't seem to do that anymore. Ooh, I will have to look through the log of changes and see. Okay, so those of you that were watching on Tuesday, the shadows are in game. And it was it was such a it was such a crazy easy thing to do. It is literally a single drop down. So basically, we just had to have the drop down um, pulled on the player model, and then on the human model, and then bake out the new prefab and. So, I'm gonna repop the zone real quick, and then so the 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 thing is like if I back up a little bit, um, oh is that extended? When I was looking earlier, did we ex now because I don't see his name. Hmm, I don't see the nameplate there. So earlier when I was coming up on them, I couldn't see their nameplates until I got pretty close. Sakaj said, the hard part is the idea. I know. I I appreciate it. <laughs> so. I'm going to repop one more time. I'm going to turn off my aggro. So I don't mess it up. So the cool thing is. <clears throat> depending on the time of day <laughs> since they're just shadows and whether or not they're moving I've got like I've got a roamer or I got somebody walking around here depending on the time of day how do they look in torchlight so um, full confession currently our torches are not emitting shadows or not not creating shadows uh, that was something I was asking Ali about um, and I think that's one of those things where we've got to look and see, um, uh, what the impact's going to be, but it really, it would be great for player lights to actually make them show up. Now, torchlight in environments do cast shadows. So like we were talking about, um, on Tuesday, you could have a hallway or like rooms where you want to keep the torches lit. Because those torches that you put on the wall will actually create the shadow and make it easier. Especially if we do something weird like make their nameplates also disappear. Unless you've got them targeted. But yeah, it's kind of cool. Like, depending on the time of day, they're uh, more or less apparent. Like, what time is it right now? 
1 p.m. Would love cleric spell that casts light in a dark dungeon. Light spells in general, it'll be fun to balance them, but um, they're they're going to be really cool and valuable. Hey, Chinny D. But you'd have to almost be on top of them to place a torch. Almost need some throwable light for to find them. Um, it depends on the environment and whether or not they're roaming and stuff like that. But being able to, yeah, being able to like launch a uh, light forward or or something, or have like a uh, eye of Zom style like wisp or light deck you can move forward. So yeah. Um, not going to dwell on it too much, but that was just one of those fun things that, oops, they got him. They got him. With classes that can create light sources, be able to put them in mud objects. Um, yeah, so that's really just on us. Um, because when they create a light source that is an item, then we can just state that the item, um, is usable in whatever, um, either mud object or static. The, the torch holders on the walls are part of our static system, which is similar, but a little different. <clears throat> Two masters said, along with lanterns, you could uh, have jars with will o' wisps in them to emit light and maybe have a magical effect on the shadows. Yep. The fun thing is, I mean, at, at the end of the day, on the back end, it's all just kind of like the same data. It's just a matter of how we um, use the data creatively. Oh, there goes a zombie minus animations. Yeah. Um, the one that was really wild was, uh, so basically what I, what, um, I did was I asked the guys if, like, how hard it would be to, um, like, do the shadow thing, and then we were thinking of, like, different ways to do it, and then Pattis was like, all you gotta do is pull this drop down in Unity, there's just, like, a little drop down on this thing. So the room that I was in that had the crazy shadows, um, we did that with that boss, or with that uh, guild leader, guild master, and, um, and uh, boom, it worked. It was just like, perfect. Do the shadows despawn at night? Two master, these actually do. Um, they're set to despawn at night. So what I did was I just, I came in here. If we load up, Shade of Dunes. Enable. We'll look at the data. Alright, so here's our camp of shadows. Um, and you can see they are a day-night spawn. So that bull here is checked. And then the day spawn group is this, it's right now is very placeholder. It's just one NPC um, on a, with a hundred percent chance of spawning in this spawn group. So now, I mean, I could be mean and I guess leave them up at night as well, uh, but for the time being, since player, um, since players don't have light sources they can use to adequately cast the shadow, like if player light sources casted shadows, then uh, then I think it would be fair to leave them leave them up at night. Was Grieg's End dungeon an HP Lovecraft re reference? I don't know. Um, John, I believe John Composey worked on that.
So it's it's fun because like if I well the way I've got it set up I can't just aggro this guy. I was about to say. Um. Uh, kill him. Oops. No. Um. I think we're far enough away from the other one. Oh no. Hey, Homestead. What about a dungeon entrance that's a giant sandworm and eats you when you get too close? Um, in theory, it's doable. Zarendal, hello. You can even have little things eat you when, when you get too close. I think I mentioned, uh, I mentioned on Tuesday that there was an encounter that I put in the Plains of Power where the thing eats you and you fight through its stomach. Reb Chumley says, if you don't have a light source at night or in a dark dungeon, you should set them on non-aggro since they wouldn't exist without the light source. You have to find your way through that part of the dungeon in the dark to avoid them. Yeah. It, so he'll exist. This guy will continue to exist even as the sun goes down um, just because he's not going to depop mid-combat. But none of the others should be up anymore now. Like, well, once we hit a certain time. I don't know that it's... It's only 5 p.m. So by 6, they'll be gone. But yeah, it would be really great if... Um, if we could affordably have it so that the player... Light Source actually casts the shadow. Um, if you create light spells, you should create darkness spells. And it would be funny if shadows cast shade on players. Um, we've talked about different darkness spells like, you know, Globe of Darkness or Cone of Darkness, etc. Um, but yeah, Rev Chumley, Chum if we were, if we were super high fidelity, then it would be like, you'd have an area where if you walk through with a light source, then just the fact that you have a light source creates a shadow, which then brings it to life. But, man, it seems like it'd be pain in the ass to... Like, we'd have to have volumes. Basically, volumes checking to see if a light source was equipped. Would probably be the way that we trigger that spawn. Alright. Let's kill this guy. Uh. Uh, but, there shouldn't be any more around here now. And they shouldn't come back until... <laughs> Give it a use to Night Eye since it's not a light source and you can avoid things in the dark. <laughs> See? Look at you guys problem solving. Yeah, so... I don't know. Like I said, we won't dwell on that, but it was it was kind of fun to see that uh, see that come to life so quickly. Oh, the undead have taken over the camp already with their cultist friends. Yeah, I mean, so Rev Rev said, very cool to see that in game after just seeing it thought of on Tuesday. I mean, that's one of the benefits of having uh, a small team and, um, you know, tools that allow for pretty, uh, um, 
pretty easy like experimentation on stuff like that, right? Like as soon as we have the idea, it's not like there needed to be a big meeting on it. No one needed to prove the idea or whatever. It's just like, hey guys, there's really, did anybody have time to look at the idea and kind of help? And they did, so there we go. Man, I sure do like, uh, I sure do like this illuminated facade in the background. So, yeah, we've got a bug. We've got a bug where, depending, I, I'm not 100% sure why it's happening. Um, but there's, I think there's like some exception being thrown or whatever that's making it so that at some point it stops loading in, depending on when they load, maybe. The order they load in for load in at the order in which they load in. Um the the NPC is not rendering for me. So we'll figure out and fix it. Are we fishing today? Um I don't think this guy's got the fishing skill. And I still need to you know what? Let's do that real quick. Let's let's put a that's we could actually make Otis a fishing trainer. So let's do that really quick. Does that seem fair? That he would be a fishing trainer? Um maybe he'll be a limited skill fishing trainer, so you still have to go back into the city to get the higher level of fishing skill. So let's do that. Let's see what happens. Um fishing's really simple at the moment um right so essentially i just get a skill i get a button um if you look if i open it i think it, it it'll be stuck open so i may have to restart my client but uh we've just got the first step of being able to make macros in um which will then allow us to do a lot more in terms of like We'll eventually break it out. We'll have our pet window and stuff as well, but that'll let me drag pet commands over and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, that's exciting. Um, here, I'll open it and then it'll be stuck open or whatever, but we'll see. Um, Will it run that yet? Um, probably like not a valid target. Um, all right, but not yet. Um, do I need to save first? Does it do anything if I do it here? Okay. So it's still more work to do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this thing, it, it doesn't go away then. We'll put it, we'll put it right here for now. Um, cool. So let's, let's make Otis a fishing trainer really quick. So we'll get out of our logs. We'll go into NPC. We'll find Oding. Sorry, Oding, not Otis. Um, yeah. So John, John uh, just started this. So John, if you're out there, sorry for showing off your work, like right as you just started it. But you know me. Anytime there's something new, I'm gonna click on it and show it off on stream. <clears throat> All right. So we've got Otis here. We're going to make him a trainer. Um, 
NPC. Skill trainer. Odings here. Skill trainer. Uh, duplicate with keys. We'll say five so he can train you up to skill five. Um, reload zone. We'll see if this updates him. There was something I was doing earlier where it wasn't updating, and I, and I started wondering. Oh, what's that sound? There's like an extra sound all of a sudden. Oh, you know what? I, I, I don't... I also don't think I pulled latest. Alright. Oh, it begins to rain. But I'm just not seeing the effect. I need to give him some text as well. I think that was it. I think that was the thing I forgot to do. It's funny, I set like 30 of these guys up and I gotta set him up and then automatically forget how to do it. Okay, there we go. Fishing. Don't have enough money. Hmm. 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 And then fishing supplies. I wonder if this guy needs to have the skill. And I also wonder, hmm. If Nick was on or Ollie, then I could ask him. I forget how to grant the first point. Like the first point of the skill. But. Let me look in the database and see. <clears throat> Item. Um, I've got, I've got a command that will give me the ability, but I, I could have sworn there's at least one more step involved here. Cause if I come in and... Let's just look. Um, because again, it's been a while since I did it. Uh, let's see. Conscribe here. Set skills. Skills all. All right. All skills. One hundred. One hundred.
And the game freezes. We'll see if this is just a delay or if it's about to kick me off the server for doing something weird. Um, Beer Chug says, yeah, I really enjoy fishing in games. A good way to still log in, but breaks up the normal grind. Yeah, um, there's a video. We just watched a video on it. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Uh, we just watched a video on that. It was really good. There's a great YouTube video on fishing in games. Um, can you link to the video? Yeah, let me... I'll look it up. I'll look it up in Slack. Fishing. Copy link. Here you go. So, we got a fishing pole. I don't think we have an, an actual appearance item for it yet. And, um, I could have sworn fishing was an ability that you actually had to, like, you had to get out of your... Oh, there it is. Okay, cool. Nice. All right. There we go. So the way it works for now is, um... Essentially, we've got it in, like, essentially our innate abilities. Scribe it. And then, do I have any grubs? I think I got grubs. If not, I'll have to buy some. Mantis Boxer says, I've been telling my guild about your game. People are interested. Nice. <gasps> Definitely appreciate that. Um, that's huge for us. The more the more of you that tell other people um, the uh, the better. <laughs> Obviously. Obviously. Uh, no, but it's really cool to have people share the information. That's when whenever anybody asks, like what what can we do to help? Like they come and they enjoy the game or whatever. Like, what can it, what can we do to help? That's the biggest help. All right. Damn it! I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna put it over here. I'm gonna put it right here. Um. Cool. So. I don't think we have an animation yet. I don't. We clearly don't have a pole yet. That would be nice. But we do. Oh wow, because, I, <laughs> because I'm because i invulnerable. There's some interesting bugs with our tools. Uh, because I'm invulnerable, I can't cast the fishing spell on myself to make it happen. Alright, the, the fishing pole is required. The fishing pole is in my hand. <gasps> this has even worked on stream before, so... What? We found a bug. I'm gonna destroy this. I'm gonna buy a new one and then we'll see. This has worked before guys, I swear to you. Welcome to game development. Put the bug on your hook, yeah. All right. All right, all right. Maybe it goes on offhand? I don't think so. Mantis says, yeah, I was talking to, about EQOA and how awesome it was and then I was, was like, check uh, this game out. This guy's building. He worked on, luckily, and other EQ stuff, too. Awesome. 
Awesome, awesome. Oh, we may have a new EQ guest before too long. I think... I think something has affected the skill. Like, maybe we changed something recently. So, I, get, I will write up a bug. Cool. I will screenshot this. And um the hope is uh the hope is to have GM Frisnik on. It'll be the first time he's been on. I've been wanting to get him on so for so long, like since the very beginning. <clears throat> so let me write this bug. Fishing pole was disobedient, correct. Let me open that. Okay, good, good, good. And once uh, once I get done here, now that I've I've failed to fish, I'm gonna zone right after this, and then see if that if that works. Um. Um. Issue. Aku, one, two, three, four, five said, love tuning in and watching the progress y'all have made. Just wondering if it's private, no big deal, no need to answer. How many hours would you say you work on the game weekly? I honestly, I wouldn't, I don't know how to answer that one. Um, because if I'm not actually sitting and working on the game, um, I'm probably thinking about the game or chatting with the team or something like that. So it's very... It's very hard for me to uh, tell. I would say that my my daily routine on stream days looks like this, and it's without a stream, it, it's kind of, you know, it varies a bit. But um, like, so I woke up at 5.17 this morning. Uh, oddly specific, I know, sorry. Um, ran downstairs while the team was still awake, and... Um, Hopped on a call with the guys until I would say probably something like how long was that call? I can look here at nine or ten. Um, because it was just we had a very specific uh thing that we needed to discuss. So how long was that call? If I if I look it up. It was five hours and two minutes that we were on um, on the call, and but it was it was it wasn't like a discussion as much as it was a discussion with um, art references and and doing art and stuff like that all at the same time, so that we could talk about changes that we were picturing and kind of align on what we wanted, how we wanted to move uh, certain things like in the textures and stuff like that forward. Um, here, I'll actually, I'll show you. Um, open a new window. Uh, let me see if I can find... Um, and, sorry Goblin if I'm spilling the beans too early or whatever. Um, but this is, and, and consider all of this a work in progress, I always... It's always a work in progress, right? Um, no pants. Yeah, there's always some no pants action going on. Um, let me see if uh, within this we can find something that's more the older.
Um, okay, we'll open your window. <coughs> okay. So the topic we were having, uh, or the topic of like the five hour conversation this morning, which I know this is going to be a very long way for me to answer your thing. Um, let me just answer that, get out of the way. So I don't, I won't forget it. Essentially I'll wake up. Um, if I'm not going straight into a call, um, or something because people are still awake, I'll usually wake up, read the news, run through some German language apps or whatever, talk to my wife before, uh, she's got to go to work. Um, and so she's got to be at work at by eight. So then no later than eight, I'm usually up and on the PC. Um, uh, my big sort of like things that I have to do is like on a Tuesday and Thursday, the farmer's market's like right over here. So I'll run and grab some meat and some vegetables and stuff like that. Um, so I usually do that around noon, but my day is basically sitting in front of my desk, um, with the exception of, I try to get an hour workout in, um, or 45 minutes workout. Some days I shower, some days I don't. Um, I will run to the market on Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, or to the grocery store on other days because it's Germany. We don't necessarily have giant American refrigerators. And so we shop more frequently. Um, and I like to buy food fresh, um, interspersed days of house cleaning, walk the dog at noon, eat lunch for 20 minutes, um, or so and watch, uh, news related videos. Um, I then will need to basically be ready to go here at 2 p.m. my time on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And so usually what I'll do is uh, on a Tuesday or Thursday, I didn't, uh, didn't this week, but I'll, I'll like at 1130, I'll walk the dog to the market, buy the stuff that we need from the market, come back and eat. Um, maybe squeeze out like a workout from like 1230 to 130 and then hop in here, stream for three hours get off here, clean up a little bit, prep uh, the kitchen and stuff for cooking, cook dinner, wife will get home um, around six, depending on the day, five or six, we'll eat, um, you know, watch some news videos or bullshit or whatever. Um, and then often I try to get back here because the team's awake and doing stuff um, around eight. It hasn't always been like this. Um, some days there's more just like when the weather is good, I'll be at the garden. And so I'll be at the garden and drinking beer a couple nights a week. Right. So I don't know. That's kind of, that's kind of the schedule on days where I don't have to stream. That gives me three extra hours, um, to basically, uh, work on stuff that I don't, I wouldn't typically work on, on stream. Um, and then, uh, if like on Wednesdays, my wife will have off sometimes. And so I'll get a little bit less work done cause we'll be doing stuff or whatever. Uh, but then like on a Saturday, uh, you know, Saturdays and Sundays are, uh, okay. Work days though. The team tends to, I think, chill out a little bit more on, uh, Sundays. Like it gets a little bit quieter in Slack and stuff, which is good. Um, I'd hope that the team is actually taking opportunities to, you know, cause everybody's, uh, for the most part working on their spare time and they've got families and stuff like that. So. Um, we don't want anybody working themselves to death and, uh, by no means is the schedule I just described, like consistent. I have days where I, I work less or some days where, um, like today I'll probably be a day where by the end of the day I will have worked more. Um, but yeah, I don't know. There's really not a, I think a good way to answer. Huh. We we'll have to do the new material treatment to this rock as well. Um, there's not a good way for me to answer that question. There's a, you know, if I'm, if I'm not working, then I'm probably feeling guilty about not working. Why did I decide to move to Germany? Uh, 2015, I really wanted to move to Germany. Um, and I was looking for a new job anyway and got a job in Germany for two years and then, uh, moved to Sweden for three years. And then back to Germany because 
My wife's German. So. Uh, um. Okay. So. Let me try fishing one more time and just make sure it's working. Yeah, it is. Okay. Back to the art. I think I opened everything that we want to look at. So the discussion this morning was very one, very much one of like, we we're talking about textures and texture quality, uh, texture fidelity, um, and how to like up it a bit, right? Because if you look, oh, I'll show you on the textures. Um, there are a couple of things. So essentially, if you look at our models, they, they look a bit flat. And this is not what our models look like behind the scenes. Like this, when you see like our huggies, our, our underwear, that's very much placeholdery. But the the skin, the, you know, when we look at like the face and the skin and stuff, um, it's, you can see detail, but it's not the level of detail that we actually want. And if you look at the face, for example, that I was just showing you, um, when you look at like our Photoshop files and stuff, um, it's actually, it's a much higher level of fidelity than what we show here. And so over time, we've been working out some technical kinks to get it better and better. Um, but then some of it is, uh, like a remaining material issue that we've discovered and addressed this morning. And then also just sort of how we're pushing some of the detail. And so if you look here, this is the result of us talking a little bit about pushing the fidelity on the textures. And so iterations that have come up since then, like just this afternoon after the discussion, um, It, but it's still using sort of the, the grayscale basis. Um, it, and basically, it looks like Goblin was adjusting stuff in the tool that we have in engine and not baking in the color yet. Like, we, we haven't hit that point. So, Goblin and Zukin are basically working and sort of pushing through um, the process of improving this and then let's see what was the next one I can't zoom in anymore hmm can I do a side by side Well, I think I nuked it. Um, hold on. So it's still it's still got a ways to go. Goblin said, but this is just the the start of sort of based off of our. So the goal is to make it so that it's you can see a lot more of like the texture, in things. Um, in different material types, but it, have it still be painted. Then, and we'll continue to sort of tighten up the lines and clean up the lines, etc. Um, let me see if I can find a. There is a, we have a, it's funny, it's just completely misapplied, but we have an old texture that we're using to sort of look at fidelity. And I wish I could rotate the model, but you can see 
you can see certain things like the skin in here in the eye and the, you can see the wrinkles and all that stuff this was just kind of popped on there but if you turn there's a shin guard on his arm that when you rotate and see it it actually it looks really nice um, but it's just this increase in level of detail and sort of uh, material differentiation and stuff. I think I could probably find it in in the engine. Um, but yeah, the goal is to continue to push that fidelity. Um, looks like more detail and possibly normal map usage. Nope. Um, that's all just in the texture. Uh, but it is, it is more detail. Uh, so let me see if I can find it. So this is what we were looking at earlier. And analyzing how to how to get our textures there. And there, there's there's things there are things in here that we agree with and something some things we don't agree with, but overall like the fidelity and uh like detail and material variation and stuff. Um so like cloth here and leather there and the leather this leather looks different than that leather, right? Um, and, you know, just kind of seeing the, the, the color differentiation here and the metal here versus there and more shadows and more highlights. And we don't necessarily need to have all of the uh, super, super jacked veins sticking out in the arm. But the fact that you can actually read that musculature and, and see that in the skin is tight. Um, same thing with the faces, right? Like you can see those details, even probably on your tiny little screens and stuff. You can see um, wrinkles in the eyes and creases in the brow and all that stuff, right? And so that's, that's um, you know, we, we want to push and see if we can hit a standard that feels more like this than what we currently got, which is very flat. Um, part of it was, part of it's a shift in painting technique Part of it is uh, what we're looking at in terms of there's some stuff going on in engine. Um, so, yeah. Vice, what's up, buddy? <laughs> Thank you for the 10 gift subs. It was funny. So last week, uh, or on Tuesday, Tuesday, <laughs> uh, the like during the stream it was like the screen went blank and like a mod had like turned off whatever i don't even know what button it is and uh it, vice was like hit me up in dms was like oh my god i'm so sorry like there was some mod functionality when i i opened this the stream mod functionality appeared and i tried to get rid of it and it fired off some shit and i was like oh no worries dude <laughs> it was funny oh man vice vice shielded us Protected us in advance. Pelosamina? I think I said it right. Pelosamina. Thank you for the follow. Fortress. Jadenfire. Motivini. Evisigoth. Sakaj. Dram. Darktall. Achromatics. 3PO. And Mortimus. There you go, gift subs. You can thank Vyth. Oh man. Yeah, so anyways, this is this was the discussion that was five hours this morning, was just us looking at textures and hey, what's up, Olgo? Uh, looking at textures, looking at our fidelity, and looking at how to how to um, push stuff and get it closer to that. So Um, but yeah, uh Zoo can fix the alpha in the cape, um, which makes me want to toss in a new, a new cape. Um, let me, I'll go, you know, just stick with it. One of these days you'll be a winner. We need to fix the, uh, we need to, we need to fix the faces on the inside of the robe. Remez. 
Thank you for your generosity. There you go, I'll go. You now have a gift sub. Um, and then after that, we were, we were talking with Ali and wound up, uh, finding some stuff going on in our materials that he was able to, um, uh, address. And so things started looking a bit richer all, already, So that's nice. Dude, Monty there, we've got a number of like new little places that you probably haven't seen. So yeah, I'm I'm really excited for us to uh really excited for us to get the the texture stuff hammered out and figured out. I think it's going to be big for us. I still didn't uh, I still didn't submit that bug. So hold on one second. Let me create a new issue. zone in here really quick. Um, issue, new issue. Um, Chaz Solo says, is there a way you can change the shader on the water depending on weather? Really choppy during storms, the flat, reflective on calm days. Um, I've got the feeling that that's doable. I, I, I would assume that that's uh, doable. Be interesting. I, I mean, basically we just, you know. I'm fairly certain that we can manipulate that shader in real time. DDJ. Um, if you like those screens, but you haven't seen a ton of our stuff, check out our website, um, but then also go to our Discord. Um, you'll see a lot of what we're using for splash screens right now. You'll see a lot of those in like the art updates channel of our Discord. Um, those of you that are in the Discord, thank you very much for being so talkative. Uh, it's, it's good. It's good to have people in there chatting and asking questions and bullshitting with each other and stuff like that. <clears throat> Leave me alone. Ow. They'll make me make myself invulnerable. I'm getting worked in the new yard. Mantis says, one thing I want to do when I make a game is like the old school DOS RPGs used to make you hunt when you camp uh, to rest for food. Like the one character that was better at it had to get food for the party. Another would look for water, etc. Yeah, there are so many fun things going on in the old CRPGs. So if you look at these textures even, they're a lot richer than they were on Tuesday, just from the little change in the, uh, change in the, the material. <coughs> Alright, so I'm going to stay here for a second. I'm going to write this bug, finally. Um... What was it saying here? Oops. Here. Uh, fishing pole is required for fishing just by having pole equipped.
Let me... You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna run down to the water now that I've zoned. Let me run to the water and see if it's still giving me this air. Oh my god. Though I, I think... Yeah. Our water volume... Oh my gosh. Bite said before that message said you were invulnerable to fishing. Could it not be related to the bug? Um, it could be that because I have I had some uh, GM crap going on that that was it. So let me... Oh, and now my ability is also gone. So we'll load the ability. Codes Mahoney asks, what game are you playing? We are running around in uh, Monsters and Memories. It's a game that we're working on. Here's our website. Here's our Discord. Oh, uh, and those of you that are new here, we also, we tend to throw all of these VODs up um, from all of the team that's working on stuff onto our YouTube there. Um, Monty said, like the newbie yard uh, has proper scale. Thanks, sir. Um, you guys are just using a painted texture for our army armor, or are you also using a normal map as well? Um, for the time being, uh, we're we're mainly reliant on the paint. Uh, really, uh, the, there, I think there may be like some minor use of normal maps in our future. I don't think we're using anything at the moment, but the the goal is to not have it look all sort of new new school last you know basically everything from 2002 on um how many people are working on this uh there are 14 of us at the moment jay should be drawing welcome um all right so let's see what happens i've loaded this up uh, so this could be an issue related to fishing it could be an issue related to um the new spellbook changes maybe affecting the abilities Yeah, so. Hmm. Do I have any other weird conditions on me? You know what? I'm going to log out and log back in. <clears throat> log back in. Oh, man. You know what I should do? No, nah, it's too late now. It's already It's already loading. There's a hundred pound group under the dock. Uh, recent pull. You know what? <coughs> it's probably completely unrelated, but I should check that either way. Okay, now I've got latest. Let me discard this bullshit. Discard all changes. Okay, thanks. Uh -uh. Let's let's do this again. Hit play. Yeah. So, those of you that are new, new here and interested in development, uh, yeah, we are working in Unity. Uh, we've basically made everything from scratch over the last two years. Um, the first year was four of us, second year plus now is up to 14 of us. Everybody's donating their time. Um, if you go to our YouTube page, there's a two year retrospective that kind of shows the progress. Um, we've streamed the development of the game from day one, basically. Uh, the, the project started because we were just talking about what we liked about older MMOs on stream. Because uh, I used to 
I used to work on EverQuest back in the day. I had a bunch of people on that I used to work with. We did interviews. You can find those on my YouTube. Uh, so Loving Robot. If you like EverQuest or old MMO history, there's like 60 hours of interviews there. And so the more we started talking about what we liked about old games and how they differ from new games, um, the more chat was like, you should uh, start a new MMO. Um, my background is... I've worked pretty much only in MMO since 2000. Um, when I've worked, I've worked in MMOs. Um, I'm taking time off here and there. Uh, but yeah, so um, having worked at a few, uh, you know, a few smaller companies as well that did really well with games you've never heard of, uh, most of you, um, the idea of starting a small project uh, that's an MMO wasn't that daunting because like I said, I've worked on MMOs that the MMO content creators don't know exist. Um, and those games make millions, probably, at least while I was working on them, made millions every year. Uh, made millions every month, to be honest. Um, and so the idea of, like, taking what we've learned from the emulator communities about old MMOs, taking the what we've learned about just making games in general using an engine and not trying to make our own shit, you know, in terms of like engine from scratch, but instead make all of the, you know, uh, foundational code or anything that we need, like our network, um, our network code and, you know, it fixes to the server and blah, blah, blah. I'm not the tech guy. Um, so I'll just kind of blah, blah, blah. Um, all of the art we started, if you go back and watch retrospective, the first year was basically these little capsules like a blue capsule for a human. I eventually gave it like these two little balls that were arms and animated them. Um, and, you know, like a white capsule for a skeleton, brown capsule turned sideways with a plane for a bat. So we did that for the first year and basically made all of our own art to um, make sure that people could see that we weren't buying assets from the store and just kind of like trying to do an asset flip game or some shit like that. Um, we pay for everything out of pocket or we build it ourselves. Um, and we, we haven't had to buy assets, uh, beyond like this shader on the water is an asset. Um, but the, one of the programmers, John, who joined the team in the second year, uh, has these really cool indie, um, uh, like sailing, um, games, salt and salt Two. uh, salt Two just came out being updated on steam. Check it out. Um. And you'll recognize the water. So when he joined the when he joined the team, he was like, "Hey, I've got this water shader I've been using for my other games. It's fantastic. Want to just use it?" We're like, "Yep, let's do it." Um, so, like, we'll point to that as an asset. We've got some placeholder icons that come out of a pack, but beyond that, um, and they are clearly placeholder. Uh, we just make everything, and um, that way you can see like our style evolve, and we can talk through the process of. Like developing the style and onboarding people and all that so um that's that's kind of where we're at for those of you that are like new new um we've got let's see we've got uh, a, a essentially a proof of concept that we're funding ourselves and working working through the development of um that will you know just be a a handful of zones um, that we've got going that let you see the game as it is before it scales, though. Um, and in keeping with our desire to be very open about the process and have it be a process that you guys are included in and we can discuss as we go, um, this month we're going to get some folks from outside in playing with us to test our pipeline and um, essentially test like our uh, ability to uh, get outsiders, uh, the installer and uh, launcher and patcher and stuff set up, um, double check our security and then we'll we'll start having like in development play tests where you guys can come in and we can just like slam the server or whatever and see what happens um, keep in mind when we do that it's not pre-alpha or pre-pre-alpha or pre-alpha 12 or anything like that um it's strictly we're in the middle of developing a game it's extremely early but we want you to come in and uh 
and just you know be a part of it and every everything that you guys give us feedback wise and idea wise and eventually like just sort of server load wise or bug wise or whatever helps us um make the game faster to be honest because we don't have to sit around and like you know sort of talk in circles or bullshit ourselves or whatever and and then you know do that for six months or years or whatever and then expose it to you and then you're like why did you do it that way right like we can just get your feedback as we go um any thoughts on imminent merch such as artwork prints or shirts concept art is beautiful it'd be cool to grab something to help support the team um i don't know let me minimize this so i can actually stuff like this Um, yeah, my green screen's kind of janky back there. Codes Mahoney, thank you for the follow. Uh, we have it. Uh, we just really, um, we, so we've got some merch. We're going to iterate on the merch. Uh, when the merch store goes live, um, it will tell you everything we don't like about the merch. Um, because it's print on demand, but it's an easy store for us to use. Um, so every every item will be like, it'll tell you, if, hey, we didn't necessarily like the embroidery on this a ton, but it's it's good enough, blah, blah, blah. Or the stickers are kind of flimsy, whatever. <coughs> um, but we'll put the merch out. We've held off on taking any uh, money for merch or any money from donations or anything beyond like the subs and stuff here, I guess. Um, until we have people in and playing the game with us and you can see that it's not bullshit. So maybe once, once we have like, um, a play test, like an open play test or something, uh, then we'll feel comfortable, um, letting you, you know, support us in some way. Um, but yeah. It, yeah. And you know, the, uh. The merch is something that uh, once we once we have it up and running, then you can give us an ideas and we'll make it. Um, hey, Dark Inside, Dark Inside said hello. I'm here for a few hours before I go start decorating Christmas tree. Good to see you and see I acknowledge you right off the bat. Um. All right, so let's try fishing again and let me see if this is still a bug. Fishing ability disappeared again. Interesting. So, let's go here. Your buddy is just getting your Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons uh, restaurant, right? That's like a more northeastern thing. Maybe starting in like Virginia. Fishing pole required. I got a fishing pole. Like a coffee shop with food. Okay. Alright, I'm going to give it one more try. Okay, it's a bug. Let me just write the bug. It's Canadian, but you have some in Ohio. I thought I thought I've seen at least one in like uh, one of my ex-wives lives in like Virginia or something. I thought I saw it there. All right, fishing pole is required. Um, despite having fishing pole equipped, um, try to fish, but keep getting the message. Fishing pole required for fishing. Um, deleted. Deleted and bought a new fishing pole. Um, also, I noticed that the fishing ability 
uh, disappears off my hot bar when zoning or uh, logging out and back in. Oops, I submitted it. I didn't assign it to anybody. I didn't, I didn't give it a label of any sort. I didn't do anything with this bug. Abilities related? Yes, I think it's abilities related. Um. What else? What else should I put on? It's not critical by any means. I would say that it's, uh, it is for friends. Uh, is it for friends? Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to flag it friends and family just cause in gameplay. Uh, consider it low priority though. Okay. There we go. What did Nick say? Uh, I love the description on the bug report. At work I get emails to say it just says fishing broke. Yeah, I try to be a, a tiny bit better than that. So yeah, those of you that haven't been around in a while, let's uh let's run over here. So one of the things I was doing last night, um, for for fun. Uh, because I can kind of do it, even if I'm interrupted, I can sit back down and knock out a couple more. It's just get a few more NPCs in that are just kind of ambient, like guards and stuff like that. So let's... I'm the only person in the zone, so I don't mind. Time set... 6 a.m. We'll have the sun come up so we can see a little bit better. Jay should be drawing. Thank you for following. Yeah, so... Like I said, super excited to see uh, the next iteration on textures and stuff. It's it's going to be really cool. Um, despite being a little indie team, um, and you know, going with like a very old school sort of blockier art style, we really think that um, the little little details, like our atmosphere. Um, eventually the textures, um, along with the lighting and the blockier art style will make something that feels pretty old school. Um, but also has enough new school elements that it, it kind of feels like a fun mix. Excuse me. So that's why we're doing things like cloth for the capes and, you know, some attachments on top of the blockier, uh, body. We've got, uh, backpacks and if you see our, our pouches here, like the belt pouches are actually represented eventually. We'll have things like flasks and books and other stuff that you can put on. Um, at this point, does working on Eminem scratch the same itch as playing a different game? Um, is it more like a source of fun versus work? Uh, I will say that this has been the... This has been the most interesting development process for me. Outside of my first real development process, right? So like... Going from being customer service to working on EverQuest was naturally like pretty badass and a huge, you know, that was my entry into the industry and learning about game development. Um, the, the process that we're taking right now is just talking to the team about it or not talking to the team about it. I posted a long ass thing that the team may or may not have read. I don't know uh, if anybody on the team is watching the videos. You can let me know if you read any of that shit. Um, but essentially. I've worked at, um, I've worked at, you know, game companies for 20 years and, you know, um, in the last, probably the last 15 years, more and more discussion of like agile methodology and scrum was, you know, we first started doing scrum on DC universe online. Um, and that was a big thing. We got sent to little seminars and then got certified as scrum masters and all this stuff. And then. Since then, you know, the last company I was at, we had agile coaches and tons of discussion about agile and agile, 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 and best practices and how to, 
you know, um, use like scaling agile framework and, you know, the, the best, best methodologies and frameworks and agile and agile and scrum and, but not scrum. Don't say scrum because that's not, you know, and so it's like all of this discussion about process and all this other shit. And really the, the thing that we found is, um, this, this project, because essentially from day one, we were engaged with the customer, right? It was the people in chat that were like, wouldn't it be cool if we if we had this made this game? Um, and so then we're talking about, all right, so what's the criteria for this game? And so we're working through the criteria for the game. Um, and we're getting feedback on our ideas as we're working. So we're implementing the game, even when it was like four of us. Um, Ollie's, you know, if you go back and watch a re retrospective video, like we started with a room and a capsule and sort of faking faking network code or whatever it was and then you know and everything was just always working we always um we so we've always had working software we've always had a working tool set um there's always been uh interaction between tech and design and art when i was art i guess um and we're we're always sort of treating each other as customers in a way that is very organic. We're always collaborative. It was always multi you know, uh, cross discipline, you know, cross disciplinary is, you know, um, if I go through the manifesto, let me, uh, cause I posted it the other day. And, um, cause when I went back and looked at the manifesto, I was like, this is the most agile team and project I've ever been on. Um, yeah, so, you know, what what are, what are the bullet points? Individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Okay. Working software over comprehensive documentation. Yeah, I mean, our documentation, for the most part, has been stuff so we don't lose track of, of some shit, but it's very high level. And then lore. The the main thing we document is, like, lore. Um, uh, customer collaboration over contract negotiation. Yep. I mean, that's what we're doing here, right? Um, and that's what we do in Slack. Um, and so we we have... I, I, I can't show you our Slack because I don't know how well like Slack security works. And then I know it's actually been a problem for some companies. So I don't want to show you like our Slack project or whatever and have you get nosy. Um, and then responding to change over following a plan. Correct. I mean, we have a general idea. Like we, we set up a, a plan in the sense of we went, um, so if you go to monsters and memories, uh, F A Q. All right. So if you come here, click here for our roadmap, it's not really a roadmap. And it's funny. I spent months and months and months of my life in management meetings, arguing over the definition of a roadmap. Right, like, I've I've spent so many hours of my life in meetings discussing the definition of things like roadmap or strategy, or, uh, you know, uh, company values. Meetings about meetings. Yes, I had meetings about those meetings. I'm sure. So what we did was we basically just did a quick kind of like breakdown. We are like, if a if a player log goes to join our game. Right? Like, they register. They, you know, client download and installation. What if they don't like it all of a sudden? Deletion. So we just basically deconstructed the entire player's journey based on what we thought we wanted to have in the game from the onset in a very, very high level, very simplified way. And then that gave us kind of like a, a, a target of stuff that we wanted to be able to address. And then we just started grinding forward, right? Like, and it's just a steady grind. Um, and we coordinate in, you know, we coordinate in Slack. We've got like 30 some channels. Um, and if a channel is bold, that means someone said some shit and I go in and I check it and we can search it. So if we were like, what do we say, you know, a year ago about this thing, we just search and that's our documentation. Um, yeah, we've been, we've actually been surprisingly fast for a, a, a small team of part-time folks like blasting through stuff 
Um, and then, you know, we basically, we can get something like that straightforward. I don't need a design document for banker interactions, right? Like we play games, we know how banks work in MMOs. We have some discussion here and there about, do we want to do this or that? And typically we go, for now, let's just do this. Boom, it's done. We check it off the list and we keep going, right? So, I mean, that's, that's basically been our approach. And so we don't have pro uh, like a bunch of process overhead. Um, we don't have, you know, a bunch of non-productive discussions or whatever. Um, I would, I would like to think we, we haven't gone down any weird rabbit holes and like gone sideways and then gone, oh shit, we lost three months worth of work for no reason. Um, you guys see us working, right? Like you can ask questions. Um, <coughs> But yeah, so anyways, the uh, the Agile, the, the principles behind the manifesto, if you go to, if you look up Agile manifesto, you can read them. Um, but there's there are a few of these. You know what, actually I'm going to read them out because some of them are, uh, again, sort of reiterating what it is that we've been doing here. Um, and it's funny, the number of people that are talking about being triggered and stuff. I know you work in corporate America. I get it. Um, and uh, yeah, it is... Belfast, it is the spirit of what all of that stuff's supposed to be doing. Um, so, Vice said, I just had to do a cost analysis for leadership at my job for free software. Yeah, I mean, that that's the kind of shit that once you scale, um, that's why we never want to be big, to be honest, right? Even if we're massively successful, we've got ideas on how to... Uh, how to basically just do this again with new projects. Like any new project has to follow the same path. You need to you need to stream it. You need to build an audience. You need to get um, feedback from your your community in real time. The whole time, um, you can't. Where no one's just going to get handed a bunch of cash. So far, we've spent forty thousand dollars in two years, roughly, um, and most of that was legal and early on contractors, and then now are like recurring software costs um, before we had artists, right? Um, so anyways, here's the, here's the principles for the Agile, behind the Agile Manifesto. Our highest priority is to satisfy the customer through early and continuous delivery of valuable software. Yep, check. Uh, welcome changing requirements, even late in development. Agile processes harness change change for the customer's competitive advantage yep yep if shit's not working and we change it um if we need something we ask for it um deliver working software frequently from a couple of weeks to a couple of months with a preference to the shorter time scale uh yeah uh, typically if if our software is not working then you probably aren't going to have a very good time watching me stream because i mean i'm rambly and all over the place enough, let alone when there's no game to show. Um, <clears throat> oh, this is the city if you haven't seen it in a while. This is uh, Night Harbor continuing to come along. We're almost there. We're rounding the corners now with the remaining districts of this beast. And then there will be some fleshing out of buildings and things like that in here. Uh, but Simon and Pattis are kicking ass. Coach Ripkins, thank you for the follow. Um, so let's go back. What else? So deliver working software frequently. Correct. Got it. Check. Business people and developers must work together daily throughout the project. Um, yeah, the, the business people are the developers. <laughs> so working functional bullet point there. Yes. Uh, build projects around motivated individuals. Give them the environment and support they need. And trust to get the job done. Yes, people own their areas. There's not a lot of like micromanaging. So this city, uh, pretty loose, pretty loose design on the districts. Pattis and Simon are just being creative and really taking inspiration from stuff and getting wild with it. And then we check it out and give feedback and go. But it's never like, um, you know, like. When we have something specific that we need, then we'll we'll specify something specific. But in my experience, usually designs are pretty high level. Environment artists do badass stuff. Game designers come in behind 
and go, oh shit, you did this? I wasn't expecting that. Oh, that's really rad. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Or hey, can we change these couple of buildings in the following way? This, you know, and so it's very iterative when it's working right. So, um, and the project is built not around motivated individuals. The project is built by motivated individuals that, I mean, folks are dedicating their spare time that they could be spending with families or watching TV or doing whatever to build a project. So they're pretty motivated. It's awesome. Uh, the most effective and uh, efficient and effective method of conveying information to and within a development team is face-to-face -face conversation. We live all over the world. Uh, I'm in Germany. Um, Ali and uh, Hamad are in Bahrain. Uh, Bahrain. Um, you know, Goblins in Canada. We got a few folks in Ohio. We got people on the West Coast, right? Like, we're all over the place, but we we hop into voice huddles in Slack. We communicate nonstop async in Slack. Um, if anybody wanted to see each other's stanky face, then we, I guess we could do video. Um, and so, yeah, that's... Uh, but we're constantly communicating. Working software is the primary measure of progress. Exactly. And every time those of you that have been gone for a while come back, we've got some new system in place. Uh, we've got some new feature. We've got some new optimization. If you read our updates, um, so go from here, go back to the website, go to updates. Um, you know, we tell you in detail. Uh, and show you what what stuff is working. Like we even tell you database commands that we're adding, right? Just because why not? Um, <clears throat> is there anything in Unity that hold that holds you back? Um, I would say if you ask the artist, there's probably some stuff that the artist would like from like Unreal, but it doesn't hold us back, especially with the style of game that we're making. And we've made decisions to mitigate. Um, some of some of the potential problems like we didn't have to figure out streaming for our MMO That's super challenging like streaming zones and blah 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 or At least it seems to have been challenging um, and you know games I've worked on in the past and there's other games because we like zone based gameplay And so for us when we're like oh shit this city's huge the city's eventually very likely eventually going to be broken up into uh, multiple zones um, Which is cool because then when you're you know, you're fighting some of the factional content that's in here or whatever, then you can, you know, camp a zone line and get you get out, you know, train the zone line and be safe and shit. So, um, let's see. Nicodemus said, that's why I like being here with you guys. I can sort of li live vicariously through your game development experiences while getting what the family needs from corporate America. Yep. Um, quarters, districts. Yeah. So we've got a district here. Um, essentially a district in here, smaller one, uh, market district. We've got the naval yard and a garrison here. I mean, we could, we can break it up as granular as we need, or we could have multiple districts in a zone. We'll figure it out as we go. Got the necropolis back there and the, uh, the concourse of souls built into that. Um, it feeds through to the other newbie yard, which we've got to work on still. Um, a lot of like the bureaucratic governmental stuff will be, be built up in these higher tiers. Uh, so the Langsdorfian League and, um, you know, the the councils that run the city and all that will be up in here. Um, some nice high value targets. Um, did Ham's design place every building or is it a general outline of the city? It's a general outline of the city and sort of points of interest in there and themes and stuff. Rookful, thank you for the follow. Um, so... Let's finish up this this agile ramble that I'm on. Um, agile processes promote sustainable development. The sponsors, developers, and users should be able to maintain a constant pace indefinitely until people, I guess, get tired and quit. Um, um, simplicity, the art of maximizing the amount of work. Uh, the art of maximizing the amount of work not done is essential. Yep. Um, so again, it's, we, we, we don't, it's, it's funny. Like we don't, uh, believe in doing like demos and, and stuff like that either, because 
we're streaming to you guys regularly. Anybody can kind of pick up a VOD from here and kind of see the progress of the project. Um, we don't we don't have anybody that we're beholden to to kind of try to impress other than you guys. So, and, and we're, you know, uh, we stream too much. You see the game too frequently for you, for us to like take the time to bullshit you. So even in the couple of videos that we've made to show progress, there was no smoke and mirrors. It was just basically me going, you know, or whoever's working on the video kind of going, hey, let's just fly through here and show you, you know, show you what we're working on. Usually it's just clips out of like these VODs and stuff. Um, and then, yeah. So, I mean, that's basically Agile Manifesto. Um, that's why I'm like, this is the most agile project I've ever worked on. Uh, we'll figure out if that bites us in the ass at some point. Um, you know, but what are you going to do? It's like, I think the, the, the philosophy I've always understood in games is you never get a second chance to make a first impression. So if you show people anything that's not the most impressive thing ever, then they, they're not going to be your customers, I guess. And maybe that'll hold true. Right. Um, or maybe, you know, because we can't, we can't just build the whole game and then reveal it to you and be like, surprise, here's the game. Um, you know, you'll have seen a lot of this stuff, but that's why we keep lore to ourselves. Um, and the, the hope is that in developing the proof of concept, we get to a point where we're able to have the resources to build more of the game than in parallel to you being able to sort of consume or absorb the proof of concept and um then there'll be you know more reveals it, not everything will always be spoiled for you all the time if that makes sense um and i know it's a bit like jerky in here it's because i'm moving at super speed but my frame rate's also a bit low because i'm streaming and running the game in the editor instead of our actual release client so apologies apologies if things look a little herky jerky um, thank you, Sethric. Sethric said, I love how transparent you guys are. Appreciate it. You know, it's, I mean, in one, on one hand, it's kind of nervous to show you, show you everything as we go, right? Um, on the other hand, I think we're confident enough in what we're making that it doesn't make us too nervous. So we got a lot of shit to do, right? Like we've, we've got to fill this, fill this beast with content, which, um, when I'm not rambling with you guys... I'll be continuing to put stuff in with uh, with Amy and Nick. and Part of what I've just been doing is getting more, like I said, getting more of these just sort of ambient NPCs in to slowly give it more life. Doing more with the scheduler. So as soon as it's dark, the performers will appear on stage. Um, you'll see little, little details um, changing where it's like... Um, Guards will have certain routes or certain placement during the day that will differ from what's going on at night. Uh, Mantis said, oh wait, Jace should be drawing said, I'm working on becoming a software engineer specializing in Unity, so it's cool to see as an MMO fan. Oh, right on, um, hit our Discord. You know, we, we answer a lot of questions and you can search our Discord and stuff for questions that's been, um, you know, that have been asked in the, in the past. Um, we try to, try to help out as much as possible. Uh, so, you know, these are little things. It's not, it's not like a big deal and you may be like, oh, why take the 10 minutes to, to do that or whatever. Um, but you'll see... We, we're always iterating and sort of building both on our, our knowledge base and kind of skills, um, improving the tools as we work with them, etc. But we're also just kind of adding in little stuff as we go so that over time there will be more and more layers of it. But like you'll see once it once it turns nighttime, the sun's going down back there. Um, a number of NPCs will they'll move positions. Um, they'll yeah, you see it gets to be nighttime. These guys who have been basically standing out of the sun. You know, even though they're just simple, like, basically, merchants. Uh, 
you know, merchants here. They move, go by the fire now that it's not so hot out. Um, you'll see NPCs switch up their routes. Uh, guards will reposition. Uh, you'll see more guards on the outside of the, uh, the night market than inside because, you know, they just conveniently don't want to see certain things. These guards weren't here before, right? Um, <coughs> has, has work started on the Night Harbor government building, uh, palace in real life, a small town would sort of be the one, be one of the first buildings built in the city. But here I feel like it hasn't been shown off as much. Have we not seen as much of it because of the secret store? Um, that's partially it. Um, there's a lot of intrigue with the people that, um, run the city and the sort of the the tentative agreements between them and, and stuff like that and that's all going to be lore stuff um plus we're just kind of working towards it i mean we got the blue buildings done last year early in the year as part of like one of goblin's early concepts and put them in just to kind of get a vibe for it but we bounce around a bat uh, bounce around a bit you should add street rats except they're actual humanoid rats that steal money off you uh, we have humanoid rats, uh, in a different location. If you, if you weren't here for the smuggler camp, um, there's some stuff going on with them and you'll see more of them around. Um, let's see. I like how dark it is at night. You might need to use a one-hander and have a torch to see better. So Mantis, we have torches. Let me put my fishing pole up, I guess, since it's not working for me. Um, do I have any on me, or do I just need to summon one here? So there we go. Here's a torch. It's got a limited duration, though, so it'll go out after a while. Yeah, and, and some of the some of the like guard pathing and stuff, um, you know, basically I put some weird timing on some of them, so it's not as frequent. So this guy here, I think he eventually will just move. Um, can you kill shadow people with a torch? I don't think you can beat them with a torch. Um, unfortunately, for the time being, at least the light source that we have here on both uh, the player and I believe on the NPC. Uh, doesn't cast shadows just because it'd be pretty expensive. So we're gonna look at that and see what we can do there um, But we we wanted them to have a light source though because it's really great to watch them like run around You can see up there See the light source moving around up in the tower and stuff and when these guys start walking You'll see it um, <clears throat> Codes Mahoney said, I know nothing about your back and stuff. I just saw yesterday that Azure um, just announced they're offering their services basically free for qualifying any developers. So stuff like PlayFab and uh, VS Enterprise, other stuff. I'm not sure if you're interested. Um, if Ali sees this or if I remember to tell him, I'll let him know what, what he thinks and what our needs are. Excuse me. He, I mean, he's the one that's got the best grip on our needs. Um, So yeah, um, one of the things I was doing last night was tossing in and just while chatting and stuff, tossing in more of these guys just because want to start to fill in stuff. Oh, there is, there's a couple things. Uh, I noticed, yeah, there, there are a couple things that, you know, work kind of weird. So if you look, this watchman's in a weird path, um, but it's kind of fun running into this stuff. So if I come in here. If I go into our zone panel, I'll load up the data for this zone. Enable. Uh, 
there's a lot of data for this zone, so it takes a minute. Which is another reason why we may eventually break this into separate zones. So, like, if I back out, you'll start to see all of all of the data in here, essentially. So, the bulk of what we're looking at, those numbers are spawners. And they're either spawners or they're uh, waypoints or go-to commands for various um, spawners. Can we implement a MIDI music system like Mario Paint so bards can write their own MIDI music? Um, lower in priority on the list for sure, but something we are actually really kind of keen to to eventually do is have um, the ability for people to to make music. I mean, our our push is for this to be as social as possible, right? Thunder, fire, ice, and wind. Um. Good morning. Yeah, so that guard just, that just walked by, he he's not on his actual path. So that's kind of a bit of a goof. It's like, why does he keep walking up here? But we'll figure it out. Um, so yeah, like I said, the performers show up at night. Um, we need to get a command to actually have them trigger animations and stuff. Um, we need to fix our say command because right now um, we have a command that you can fire to to say stuff or have the NPCs like basically communicators are walking around and blah 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 but but it's not working we've got you know more sort of life coming into the city for quest NPCs but I also want to get some uh, other other NPCs in that um, are just for now at least uh, more just flavor um, I want to I want to move her actually that's not nav mesh is it um, we are we're using a nav mesh but you're you're not looking at it now um, so essentially everything that you see here is this is just we have a we have the means of oh, why is that doing that move this over here right here um so we've got uh, a interface built into unity uh, through like the spawn manipulator script that then interfaces with our database Will sitting in chairs be a thing? Um, not right off the bat. If we decide it's worth the animation and want to work on it later, we may. Um, for now, you can sit on a chair. But not like EQ2 style or whatever. You have a sit. You have a chair. Have have at it. Um, but yeah, so the data that you're looking at there is uh, essentially this data. Right? Um, but it's for... Night Harbor. Um, so these are all these spawn points that are back there. And so here, let me update something really quick. Ain't no sitting, only fighting. Exactly. All right, so we come in here. Amy slash Luna. I will always, I got to remember to use her stage name. We all have our stage name, our DJ names. But everybody refers to me as Sean on their streams and not a loving robot. So. <sighs> so let's take let's take her, this uh sojourner. And rather than have her standing off by herself there, because I don't see a go-to landing here, so I don't think anybody's joining her. So let's take her, we'll move her here. We're gonna rotate her to face the bar. In here, maybe bring her out of the way a little bit. Hey, J Bombo. We'll update the position, we'll hit save, and now that's been 
updated in the database. <clears throat> and so if we only wanted her to show up like at night and I've got the feeling that yeah based on this every time the zones repopped um, she winds up being a you know one of whatever all is on this encounter table um cool so, and we can always test this kind of stuff by, oops, let me go over here. Um, Jay said, that's interesting. So you essentially have this database information, um, to manipulate instead of the object itself. Yeah, because, uh, we, we're working with so much data, right? So... If I, if I look at something like our zone spawns, um, just spawn points that we've added with our little team since we've started, we've got 972. <coughs> if I look at something like NPCs, um, we have 856 NPCs in, and we're, we're basically just getting started. Item. Um, we have a thousand uh, items, like literally just getting started. We have a thousand item records in here, right? So if you're, if you're, if you're making an MMO, one of the first things you've got to think about is you're, you're working with um, a ton of data and that ton of data is only going to get bigger the longer your project you know goes on and so this idea of um, having because I've seen I've seen MMOs that were you know basically being worked on even by you know at companies um, like when I was at Sony online you know that makes made MMOs um, for you know that that's what we're known for but I'd see new projects where there would be a lot of like data in, uh, you know, Unreal's, uh, back in the day, Kismet and, and things like that. And you would, we, they would be, you know, there'd be data built into like the various objects in the game. And it's like, how do you, how do you, um, how do you manage all of that? How do you query all of that? If, if you're looking for, um, if you're looking for a specific, uh, you know, a specific item or a specific NPC or whatever, and like specific properties of it or all, all NPCs with certain properties or whatever, right? Like if I want to find an item, if I want to find all cleric items at the moment, um, basically everything that we've put a cleric tag on. So quest items, uh, scrolls, armor, all that shit. Um, cool. So everything that's been properly flagged at least, or has it in a name, you can find it right here, right? Um, quest items. As we're adding quests, I try to make sure that we're flagging all of the quest items properly. Right, so, um, 104 quest items. Cool. Um, what else, right? And so, you, you've got to be able to have a, uh, you, well, it's my belief. I don't know. What do I know? Um, but it's my belief that you're dealing with a shitload of data and it's beneficial to have the ability to quickly like query that data, replicate that data, um, you know, and, and easily manage that data. Um, and it's like, if I had to go into every scene in, in, uh, unity and open that scene, and then go into some object in that scene and look at the properties on that object, it would just be insane. It would be a nightmare. Um, so that is that is definitely not what we want to do. Um, so we started from the very beginning. One of the first things that we did back two years ago at this point was sit down and like, uh, you know, think through a relational database and and really just sort of like. Uh, we actually have um, a spreadsheet that's it's you know two years old now, but it was 
uh, partially me on a plane, just typing it into my phone um, in like Google Google Sheets. And it was basically a column would be a new table, and then the rows would be the attributes within that table, and then defining the relationship between tables, right? Because like an NPC has an NPC. If we look in here, um, you know, if I go to NPC. And an NPC is going to have uh, attributes that are then like, you know, pulling from another table. So, so somewhere we've got a table that's defining classes, you know, races and other attributes. And so, yeah, I mean, how do they all, all the, all link together? Um, our actual build out differs a bit from like what was originally written up, but in the day, um, it, it works. And then what we've been doing, like Keith and Ali have been working on building better interfaces so that we're not always in a database, but working in a database is actually, uh, feels pretty natural to me at least. And, and feels like it's still relatively easy. Belfaster asks, when you are working on EQ and a new expansion, would you guys make a new version of the database with the new data, any necessary fields, or would you just make additional table, join them together when it went live? Um, at work, we keep all the historical tables just to not break old reports, but some tables have something like 40 plus variants. I think for the most part, um, I might be speaking as someone who's just too much of a end user or layman to speak, uh, to, to speak to the sort of technical actuality or whatever. But as a designer, the way it looked was we just added more, we were mainly in the business of adding more records, not adding more tables and stuff. New tables came as a result of new functionality or properties. Um, and so usually it was, we were doing things like um, adding new abilities and we had a, the spell guy that was doing that. So new abilities would be these first five tables, I think at least. Um, we have things like uh, items, which is, what three tables because there's item item effect item proc and then those also link back to abilities right so um there's there's loot uh loot tables that we build and then we've got the npc loot table is where we attach it to npcs and so essentially that's an extension of the npc right that's a relationship with the npc we've got npc abilities npc ability lists right so we can um associate NPC or in, we can associate lists of abilities with NPCs. Um, we then associate, uh, or we put NPCs into encounter tables or spawn groups, which rolls to see which monsters spawn. Um, the best sort of simplest example of that is 95% of the time, um, a goofy placeholder appears and then 5% of the time an awesome boss appears, right? So that's a 95, five, um, you know, the distribution on the NPC spawn group. Um, so like if you look here, where rats, we've got a distribution of the different where rats based on their level, etc. Um, then uh, the NPC spawn group is linked to the zone spawn. That's what you see over here, right? So if you look, this is NPC spawn group. Um, and then there are properties that are like, is it a day night spawn? So in this case, the the table or the basically the encounter table is here. That's not checked, so it means that that NPC is just always always up there. But we can make her only appear at night. Um, you know, comes to the bar at night by checking that box and then moving her um, NPC spawn group down to the night spawn group. Um, other questions? Uh, find it better in a software development project the earlier you have tables established better. Yeah, I mean, the sneaky Russian asked, uh, curious why you chose SQL instead of static file format like Lua or something to define those tables. Um, I think for from my end, there, there's probably technical reasons, 
but from my end and just sort of visualizing the data, I, I've been brought up on, you know, since she, a relational DB, um, and I'm kind of a trained monkey in a lot of regards, right? Like I, I can't speak to you the, the, the value of one approach versus the other. And so when I like grunt and point and make weird, like scratching on the ground with my foot to Ollie, who actually is smart and knows how to, knows the pros cons and how to set all this shit up. Uh, my, my, what I said was I really like looking at data in a spreadsheet format. I like looking at data in tables. I like to understand a relationship between tables because like I, I can picture visually, I could go to a whiteboard without looking at our database and draw the relationship of stuff. Um, and so I, it's intuitive for me to be able to work within it. Um, naturally, there's always gonna be new properties that appear like various fields where I'm like, what the hell does that do? As that's been happening over the last like month, especially with Luna just starting on the team, um, what, uh, oh, my torch just ran out of fuel. Now it's dark. Uh, basically with adding a new designer, I've been documenting a lot of, you know, what every single field does in here. Uh, so that if we go to scale the design team later or need to bring somebody else on board or whatever, it's even easier. Plus, it's also just a great way to learn it. Um... Yeah, static tables or, you know, like you're talking about uh, static file format like Lua or whatever. Um, one of the things I asked, um, one of the things I asked Ali a, a, about or two is like, we're, we're also trying to avoid scripting for as long as possible because the second we start to veer off into scripting, what I saw on other projects was the second you start to give like design more and more sort of free form power to just script whatever i've i've seen games where the the encounter tables the drop tables everything is in a script somewhere and so you've got all these sort of discrete scripts doing shit for different zones and different npcs and like there's just all of a sudden there's like scripts everywhere um and i don't know that i'm talking about the same thing that you are in this case but there's just certain things where I'm like, you know, uh, that's where code reviews, script design reviews come into play in your process though, right? And that's process overhead. Um, and that's, that, that, it, I, sure. I'm not going to argue with it. Um, that's, that is, that is one of those things where it's, my belief, I don't know that this is right, but it's my belief that if we're giving the sort of simplicity of the, the game type that we're making in terms of um, combat and um, sort of the core loops, most of that should be stuff that we can easily tableize and look at it and go, you know, what are the, what are the X number of values that you need to have um, to be able to pull that off. Like our, our scripting, um, the closest thing we have to scripting is like in our quests. If you look at, let me find something here. Um, nah, that's not a good example. Is this the new Witcher 4? Verified female booty critic? Um, might be, might be. Let me find one that I actually worked on so I can recognize it. Alright, so this is pretty straightforward. That's not going to be good enough. Here. Alright. So this is about as complex as we're getting with, you know, the sort of freeform putting a bunch of different uh, actions in to a, a given, like, field or whatever, as opposed to having it uh, broken up. And in theory, we could still break stuff out even further, but you know, this grants experience, fires off an emote, fires off a say, fires off another say, provides a player with an item. Um, it's easy for me to then, you know, get in here and look for everything that's currently giving an item in the responses. Right? Um, I don't have to, like, go through a bunch of different scripts and figure out, like, why something's messed up. I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, I'm probably talking out my ass. Um, I'm definitely not speaking eloquently. Uh, but what what I can say is, 
when stuff's when stuff's fairly standardized in a DB, um, for me at least, I found that it's just a hell of a lot easier to maintain. It's a hell of a lot easier to debug. There's only so many things that we can screw up. And if we screw up something where we find it all the time at the moment, like we can put values in the fields that'll crash a zone or do something sort of dicky with the server. And so when that happens, then we've, we've identified it. We fix it for that field or for whatever, um, whatever value we put in or whatever, and it no longer, it won't happen again. So, um, the sneaky Russian said, so this is random feedback from Rando you never heard or met, but my experience projects that live entirely in DB like this become cumbersome long-term to deal with. Bug fixing becomes a chore. I guess at some point you'll run into the need for major refactoring, but you need to worry about that right now, I guess. Um, I would say, so I've, I've only ever worked on MMOs and I think this statement stays true for the last 20 years at least. And every MMO I've worked on is still live. Yeah. Um, and the first MMO I worked on was up to, I think we put in 180,000 records in one expansion. So I'm, I'm, I'm used to scale. And that was our, what was Lost Dungeons? Was that the fifth, sixth expansion? So, I, if we get to the point where we need to do a major refactor, which is inevitable, um, then that'll be awesome because that means we've been around long enough to need a major refact refactor. But just basically, I'm not trying to be snarky, but I'm just speaking from my experience, which is like... I've seen this and I, I'm more comfortable with it than I am like I, I've come on to projects later um yeah I've I've come on in the projects later in their life cycle and just been like holy shit really these are the tools <laughs> uh Cherix uh a sharp name uh yeah Cherix17 and a sharp name thank you for the follow sorry I was a little slow on that um yeah, people are afraid of refactoring, but it's a good thing with scoping. Yeah, it's... I honestly... We, we've had that discussion before where we're like, uh, well, you know, there are certain things we know will eventually break, and we'll break... We'll deal with them later. Um, and if we live... If the project lives long enough for it to break, then it is a good problem. Um, there is, like, major refactors, um, especially related to, like, our formulas and data and stuff in EQ during Planes of Power. And yeah, it's just kind of par for the course, I guess. Um, Kaito said, feels like you'll be around for a while, in my opinion. Game's headed in a cool direction. Well, thank you. So, verified female booty critic, who I don't think I'm going to give you a nickname. You, I just want to read that out every, every time because it's such a silly name. Um, so this TV houses... Excuse me, burps. Um, this DB houses all the data of every single account. Is that how it works? No, it's... Uh, well, I mean, we have a database for accounts and stuff, but... This is every single um, item, NPC, bit of dialogue, quest, um, spawn points, right? It's, it's all of these spawn points. It's every item that the NPC drops, everything they say. Um all of their behavior, like these behavior, these blue lines are essentially go-tos, their behaviors. Um, and if you look at, you know, if you look at some of them, uh, let me see if I can find one that's, you know, there's some, there's some, essentially, if you look here, this is like a mini script, but it's like the Lego piece script. It's Fisher Price for, you know, kids like me who who would swallow the Lego or put it up their nose. Ollie went ahead and just made a nice big Duplo box for me, right? So I can't break too much. Um, and it, You know, I've got a finite number of things I can do, right? So it's just like, and I just know that these commands fire in sequence. I can skip around the sequence. 
Um, I've got... Alright, so... As soon as a mob spawns, it pauses for 70 seconds. It fires off a trigger to these other guys who are listening. Um, pauses another 15 seconds because it actually tells them to start moving. And so he waits just... It's cinematic, I guess. or You know what I mean? Like, it's just planning. Um, the... Uh, then there's a bunch of go-tos and then he switches his faction when he gets down in the basement surprise because he's going to attack you spoiler like if you follow him down there he's going to jump you and on the way down like he switches his faction so if you get too close he'll actually attack you before he gets to this point if you let him keep going he'll actually spawn another guy that will help in the ambush and then he'll go down there and hang out with that guy for 180 seconds and if nothing happens then he'll depop and then he'll wait the appropriate amount of time, which is defined in another table. Um, and I can I can vary like his respawn rate or whatever to be non-standard if I want, but I didn't on this. And then he'll come back and he'll do it again. And that is the life of this NPC. It's Groundhog Day. Um, and so all of this stuff, you assemble it here. And then when you hit save, it goes into the spawn commands. And so if I look at Night Harbor, which NPC is this? Um, he is 193. So if I come into here, um, let me go next. If I come in here, Night Harbor, 193. It's basically all of these records. How often do I stream? I stream on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, basically Tuesday, Thursday from three hours ago to about 15 minutes from now. <clears throat> so it's, uh, I stream from 2 p.m. Central European time. <coughs> uh... Codes Mahoney said, currently refactoring my day job app from Dapper to EF Core. It's a trip. I don't know what either of those things are. I know if someone looks Dapper, that means they're probably handsome in the 50s. Um, and Fanatics, Phil. What up, Phil? Just dropping by to say great work. Awesome update. Take care. Hey, man. Have a great December. Merry Christmas if I don't see you again before then. Um... Nicodemus. I've had people come to me with access DB issue, not realizing it's great uh, for like a small group of people, but not meant for enterprise solution. So if I understand correctly, um, and again, like I said, I'm a non-technical person. I'm just kind of a, I'm, I'm more of a making things with the things you show me how to use kind of person. Um, like old EQ was a, uh, was a Oracle DB with an access front end. And so a lot of our work was either when you first got there, they would like show you how to, how to, um, work in like the access forms. Um, and the form view was the form view kind of looked like, like we started doing some stuff like that. So like, uh, so it looked more like this, right? And that was like the form view. And all that's doing is putting it back in the database as well. And so it seemed like as soon as you, as soon as you, um, learns what all the attributes were and how the, how the tables related to each other, etc., um, then it was a lot easier because we could just copy from Excel straight into the database. And we we're always working in a live database, which was sketchy as shit, but we did it and and so we could we could build out a lot of our data in Excel and then just like put it in there. Because um, we didn't have fun things like the ability to run around in editor and plop down little green goobers that, you know, showed where spawn points and stuff were. So instead what we did was we had turned like slash log on. We'd run around and just click loc, 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 loc and get coordinates for every mob that we wanted to appear somewhere, which was actually kind of fast. Then we had... We would take that out of our log, we'd put it into Excel, and then we would 
from the Excel, we would attach all of our encounter tables and we'd put that into the live database and hope we didn't overwrite somebody's data. Um, how many, how many coders do we have working on this game? <coughs> Four? Ali? Gary? John? Keith? Am I missing a coder? I don't think I'm missing a coder. Apologies if I'm missing you, coder. Um, our team page actually goes through everybody that's currently on the team. I don't think anybody's missing at the moment. So if you go to our team page on the website, um, and then you can check out the FAQ and stuff as well. Um, again, those of you that are new here, here's our Discord. Uh, thanks again for all the the fun conversation and questions and stuff. Um, uh, Kuz Mahoney said, oh, okay, didn't know you weren't a C-sharp dev. You probably have some C-sharp chops, though. Not really. Not really. I don't, I mean, I have no need to get in there. Um, if I, if I absolutely had a, like a, you know, someone pointing a gun at my butt or something, I would, I could probably somehow translate my bit of JavaScript knowledge into C-sharp and then watch two tutorials on YouTube and make some shit happen. I mean, I've, I've worked in C-sharp on my own for little side AR, VR projects and stuff over the years um, in Unity uh, just through use of like tutorials and, and cribbing off of other people's scripts. Um, but I don't, I don't get my hands in there because I don't want to break anything. And, um, and honestly, I'm just, I just don't have the knowledge and we have smart people doing that stuff. So. I just file bug reports or send Ollie messages or ask for help in Slack and then go back to like writing colorful dialogue and doing other similar stuff. Oh, before we go, cause I still got, I've got, you know, 15 minutes or whatever. Um, those of you that, that missed the shadow man thing on Tuesday here. I will, I will show you what, you what we did. It was so much fun. Um, so we, we have, um, if you came in later at the beginning of the stream, I, I went over to the shadow man camp, our shadows. Um, and it, it all stemmed from this interaction with this guy in here. And then, uh, Zukin and I were talking about like a cool way to be able to turn this idea into an NPC. Oops. Um, and then Patrus was like, dude, that's, that's literally like one checkbox in, um, unity and you've got it. So like I was in here looking at my own shadow and going, holy shit, wouldn't that be a fun NPC if that was a shadow? Um, let me make myself invulnerable. Uh, you know what I'll do? Just really quickly. Um, I'll come in here. I'll go to our NPC spawn group. Shadow. Shadow camp. Cool, that'll work. We'll go here. Uh, let me load this data back up. Probably not the fastest way to do it, but it'll be the easiest way for me to not mess it up. Or dig around DB. <coughs> and then uh, once that loads up, it takes a second. We'll check this guy out. We'll also, we'll turn off the lights. We'll make it nighttime. So let's come in here. Let's time set uh, 7 p.m. Now it's very shadowy. Nice. Um, we'll go in here. Uh, no. So this is built in Unity, but we've just layered in a lot of like design tools, and um, it's our you know we've got our own DB structure, networking, etc. But again, that's more of the uh, that's more for those nerds to tell you about. Those big brain guys. Um, all right, so we come in here. 
We'll... Ah, uh, you know what? We'll do this. Um, just for now. That way I, I don't... I have to go back and look him up again. We'll hit save. We'll come back in here. We'll maximize this for effect. And then we will reload the data in the zone. And see what happens. It's nighttime, so it should be a Shadow Man instead of him. I'm invulnerable, so you're not you're not seeing it, but So I'm not reacting or anything, because he would just kill me pretty instantly. Yeah, so we made a camp of these guys in Shade of Dunes already, but... It's funny without the light. But yeah, so one of the fun things about working on this project really has been, like, we'll have an idea and somebody will either throw their idea in game or, um, you know, just help us get the idea in, like, in a matter of, we figured this out in 30 minutes after the stream on Tuesday, so. <coughs> um, the ones that, yeah. The ones that we have um, in the desert, we've got. I've, I've turned them off at night, so it's not completely unfair. But yeah, it allows us to do some fun shit. <coughs> oh, I forgot they run super fast, Kaicho. Um, Kaicho said, "Blend of design tools and Unity is a really nice, unique, modern look with classic vibes." Yeah, and some of the decision on the tools is actually meant to make us make content that feels classic. Um, built like a gorilla at that angle, yeah. So, um, I think they work better in environments with more controlled lighting indoors. Dargoth, I think it's more, it's, uh, it's a cooler visual, but... Um, the ones that are in the desert, they, they feel okay as well. Classic, but you are attacked by the dynamic lighting. Uh. <coughs> um. What about a raid encounter where someone has to have a light source to avoid high DPS low moving mobs, something like that? Um, the challenge will be with understanding... Under, it's possible because the light source would we'd essentially be able to create a volume that is represented by the light source and then we'd understand what is or isn't in the volume uh, during that. So we could probably create encounters that do that sort of thing. Um, so what are your hopes for this game? Um, our hopes for the game are, are, or I guess it's fine for me to speak in the hour instead of my, um, but... Uh, our hopes for the game are to essentially get it to a point where we can quickly continue to build the game while having people come in and play with us. Um, it'll be instead of something like, you know, considering like pre-alpha or whatever, it's just going to be a development build and you can come in and play with us during development at different periods. Uh, the goal is to finish the proof of concept, um, you know, as quickly as possible, but we're not beholden to anybody at the moment. We don't have like a a runway that we're burning through in terms of cash or whatever. We haven't made any promises to anybody. So we'll, the game will be done when it's done. The proof of concept will be done when it's done and we feel good about it. Um, and then the goal is to, if we've got something that you guys are continuing to appreciate and like um, and want to play, um, take and go from the proof of concept stage to finding the right point to essentially monetize uh, monetize a smaller game with a very clear roadmap um, on how we're going to grow that game world and the content. And ideally, by that point, we've shown you that we're not bullshitting you. It's not a cash grab. 
we've you know been showing you our work every week for you know at that point probably two and a half three years um those the community that we built hopefully we retain folks and people continue to be interested it's great to see people come back after three months or six months and like um and see the 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 growth right um and so we we know the game's improving and growing every month we put that out in updates again we're open with any questions that you have um, and then the goal is to basically get to a live state that uh, allows us to start generating enough revenue to slowly bring our team on board full time we'll scale the team based on the revenue that's coming in um you know the more we can cover folks as part of like normal operating expenses um the better because then they can they can work in a dedicated manner whereas everybody's kind of working part-time right now so we should see movement go even faster uh we'll continue to grow the community we'll grow the game um as we grow revenue uh, the goal always is to look for profitability as opposed to revenue scale we're happy with you know we know we know how much of a team we can support with 10,000 subs or 5,000 subs if we happen to get over time 10,000 subs we know how to um we know how to basically ramp up with that if we screw around and there happens to be enough people out there that enjoy what they're seeing and we have enough game to support them um you know we we know what our scaling and our reinvestment in the game looks like at 20,000 subs 30,000 subs whatever um and we'll we'll grow responsibly based on whether or not there's a customer base if there's no customer base if we work on this and we get done proof of concept and there's like 50 of you that are like i'll give you 15 bucks or 10 bucks or whatever then we will you know we'll have the realization that we haven't built the right thing um in theory since there's a couple thousand of you already um we should be able to figure that out before it becomes a scenario in which we only have 50 of you um if we have a couple thousand and it dips down to 50 then we need to figure out what went wrong did I take my pants off on stream? Did I say the wrong thing? Did somebody do something else? Do you just not like video games anymore? You know, did some other game come out that does what we're doing, but better and sooner? And we'll, we'll see that shit coming. Um, and if we, um, if we find that the game is doing well and the community continues to grow and there's a market for what we have, um, then we will grow this game over the next many, many years in a way where the focus is always on reinvesting in the game in the community um and uh at some point if we have a successful game um that's big enough to provide us with the profitability that we think we could start a new game rather than do the same shit that i've seen at every company that i've been at um you know rather than go oh great now we've got this successful game let's make another immediately successful game we're gonna throw a team at it and we're gonna we're going to try to get this done in three years from now and blah, 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 and like spend millions. Um, no, we'll basically say anybody on the team that wants to start a new game, let's basically start streaming, build a community around your game. You'll get, you know, we've spent, like I said, roughly 40 grand so far in two years on different expenses. Um, and we have an, you know, so we have an understanding of sort of uh what it takes to do what in in theory with the company formed we wouldn't have to outsource art maybe an artist would immediately jump on the team maybe it's an artist that decided they wanted to make the game and every game that we make after this will need to prove that they're willing to work in an open fashion with the community um they need to show their work as they go no smoke and mirrors no bullshit e3 demos no like you know like uh pretty pretty workups of one zone with you know smoke and mirrors in order to get uh funding or whatever it's build the game um in an open manner build a community through being authentic and through you know uh having a good uh relationship with your community um and be willing to grind and that will be our approach um so yeah that that is the plan for the game and we'll see we'll see i mean at the end of the day the only thing that matters is making the game like no matter how fun a stream is no matter how good a video is no matter how badass the website is whatever the only thing that we really care about is people that play games is playing a game that we enjoy 
And so our job every day, even on days where it's like, oh shit, I'm having a rough day. Like I think last Tuesday, uh, towards the end of the stream, you know, like an hour earlier, I was like, guys, I'm not in the mood. I just, I'm tapping out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna end the stream. And yeah, and then Thursday came back. I was energized. I was having a good time or whatever, but I was just like, had shit going on and blah, blah, blah. And, so, and that's just the, that's the reality of making games. This week's been fantastic. Today's even more fantastic. And, um, and I think that, you know, it's just important to, even on days where it's like, oh, it's a challenge or whatever, just be like, or, you know, if some conflict comes up or if something's not working, it's just a grind, right? Like, all right, well, that sucks, but we still need to make a game. And, you know, just being willing to grind forward. And so, uh, and I'm, I'm going to say something, I, want, I don't want to sound weird or whatever, but like, if, if we as people making the game enjoy what we're making, believe in what we're making, and we feel that we're taking the right sort of direction, um, and we've listened to the feedback, but we're just like, oh man, we're just like, we want to try this. We have to be willing to like have a situation where half of our discord disappears or, you know, um, <clears throat> half the team quits or whatever, or whatever, and just keep pushing through it and rebuild and show why the thing that we're making has value and why we believe in it. And so... You know, when people are like, oh, I want to make stuff. The, the thing is, you just got to you got to start making it right. And so that's that's sort of been the idea with this company. Again, the first year it was four of us, no artists. I was like making bullshit art myself in Blender as placeholder. Ollie was making a little bit of stuff here and there. We outsourced some stuff you know, threw some cash at it, but not a lot. Um, and we just constant grind, you know, board and then. <coughs> And then since then, you know, it's been fantastic getting really talented people um, to join the team over time. And I think it's just a byproduct of we show what we're making on stream. People have checked out the stream and said, hey, watch the stream, like the game you're making, want to help. And, you know, that's been fantastic. So I'm, I'm pretty optimistic. I've really enjoyed this process um, compared to other processes that I've been a part of um, I feel like it's working really well and um, you know when I look at the quality of people that have joined the team and the cool people in the community like yeah it's just uh, I, I think it's showing us that we're on the right track so but if we're not you guys let us know right like I look at this art and I'm like oh man I love how wacky and green this is I like the way the shadow looks our character arts, you know, coming together. Um, if you're like, oh man, you guys are higher in your own supply, at some point you guys need to just tell us what you think. Go to the Discord and, you know, give us your thoughts. We try, we've tried to listen to you the whole time, right? So. Shadow has taken 250,000 hit points off me. Yeah, for sure. <coughs> Petra said Goblin was an excellent pickup. Known him as an artist for almost 10 years now. Oh, nice. Yeah, Goblin's great. Urkenstaff's great. Pattis is great. Zukin's great. Dude, everybody, everybody on the team is is honestly, it's just been fantastic. I'm, I, I tell them all the time I'm not bullshitting. Like, they're really talented people. Super fortunate to have them on the team. Um, yeah, so... Stanswar says, watching the stream makes me feel the good emotions I felt back in this era of gaming. You know what? Doing this stream uh, makes me feel the good emotions that I had back in this era of gaming. There's Pattis. But yeah, man. Um, so that's where we're at. It's Thursday. Um, I'm going to wrap up for today. I will see everybody on Tuesday at... Uh, what time is it? Eastern. It's 2 p.m. my time. Um, whatever that is. Uh, I think it may show you on Twitch. Let me know if it doesn't. 11 a.m.? <clears throat> cool. So... It, well, it's 11 a.m. now, so three hours earlier. Three hours earlier, right? Because I'm not starting the stream, I'm ending it. <laughs>
8 a.m. Makes sense. That's the math for you. Um, cool, guys. Thank you very much for being here. Again, appreciate it. Um, those of you that have asked about merch and support and stuff like that, just remember the more people you tell about the community, the more people you get in our Discord or on the mailing list um, or watching our YouTube videos, the better for us. And that's huge support for now. Uh, don't sweat the other stuff. Mantis Boxer, goodbye. Yeah, let's do the thing where we say goodbye now. Takes a minute or two. Jaden Fire, happy Thursday. Nicodemus, thank you for your generosity. Strange Jay, there you go. Enjoy the gift sub. Um, later, Pattis. Rev Chumley, goodbye. Olgo, Auf Wiedersehen. Bis bald. Justin, see ya, buddy. BDC Retro. Have a good one. Bye, Chinny D, Hell's Ridge. Enjoy your vacation, Hell's Ridge. Nicodemus, thank you for all your excellent questions. Mirix, good to see you. And goodbye. Is that it? Is that it? Bueller. Bueller. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great weekend. I will see you on Tuesday. Be safe out there. Bye bye, Chad, the alpha male. Bye, Kaicho. Demon injected. See you. Fortress, see you. See you as a false alarm. My dog's like, come on, man. I need to go out. I know, buddy. You'll go out in a second. All right. No, I'm pooping first. No, you're going to have to wait, buddy. See you guys. <laughs>